Hello and welcome to Lesson Scylla. In today's tutorial, we are going to discuss about Microsoft Azure Virtual Desktop or AVD. Now, this is a beginner level tutorial, so I do not expect you to know much about Azure Virtual Desktop. We are going to discuss about its core features first, and then we're going to move over to our virtual lab and see everything in action. So, what is Azure Virtual Desktop? Azure Virtual Desktop is a desktop and app virtualization service that runs on Azure. Some of you may have worked with remote desktop services in the past, where you double click on an icon on your desktop and it logs you into a remote desktop environment and you use applications and programs within this remote desktop environment. Azure Virtual Desktop is the exact same solution in the cloud. Now the key features of ABD are it delivers a full Windows experience for Windows 11, Windows 10, or Windows Server. You can have single session or multiple sessions for scalability. It offers full desktops, or you can use remote apps feature, where it appears like you're running a local application from your local machine without having to log into a full remote desktop environment. And it can help you replace existing remote desktop services as well. So let's go ahead to our virtual lab and see how AVD works. I have now logged into portal.azure.com using my global administrator account. When you log in for the first time, the first thing that you need to do is go to the appropriate subscription and check the IAM or access control. You need to have certain RBAC role permissions to be able to deploy Azure resources. Now, since this is a test environment, I already have owner RBAC role assigned to my account, so I can do anything with this subscription. But in your case, it may be different, so best to check that you have necessary permissions. I'll put the official Microsoft documentation in the YouTube description for your reference. Once you've checked that you have correct permissions, go to the search bar and look for Azure Virtual Desktop. As you type the word virtual, you will see Azure Virtual Desktop coming under services. Click on that to go to Azure Virtual Desktop service. Click create a host pool to create a new host pool. A host pool is essentially a group of Azure Virtual Machines that are going to get used in this Azure Virtual Desktop setup. Your host pool can consist from one virtual machine up to 500 virtual machines. Now, select the correct subscription and the resource group that you would like the resources deployed to. Give the host pool a name. I'm going to call it HP01. Select the location. I'm going to select Central India for my test deployment. But for you, make sure that you select a location that is appropriate to you. Now, validation environment gives you the option to test service changes before they're deployed to production. I do not need a validation environment. Obviously, it's going to cost you more money. So I'm just going to leave it as no. And the preferred app group type, you've got two options, desktop and remote app. Desktop will give you a fully fledged remote desktop experience where you log into your remote desktop session. Remote apps will give you access to specific remote apps from your local computer and you can run them as if they are locally installed applications. For this tutorial, I'm going to go with desktop, but if you've got any questions around remote app or want me to do another video on it, you can put your request in the YouTube comments below. When it comes to host pool types, there are two options that you can select from. The first one is personal, which means each session host or virtual machine in the host pool gets assigned to a dedicated user, which means it's a one-to-one -one relationship. Otherwise, you can go with the pooled option, which means you will have several virtual machines or session hosts in the host pool and any user at any given time can get connected to any of the servers or virtual machines that you decide to run in the host pool. Now, load balancing is provided by Azure. There are two options that you can select from, and also you can control how many sessions are allowed to a given host. Let's say that you have got four virtual machines, four servers running in the pooled setup, and you can have 10 sessions per server. Um, in this tutorial, I'm not going to go too much into 
pooled option. Um, if you decide to go with pooled option, remember you will need to configure FS Logix containers, which will help you with maintaining the personalization and user data. So if you're an end user and you get connected to server A for the first time, first half of the day, and the next day you connect to another server, you will not lose your customization or personalization data. It is a bit involved process. If you need me to do another video on the pooled setup, I will do that. Put your request in the YouTube comment. For this tutorial, we are going to go with personal. An assignment type, I'm going to leave it automatic, which means Azure is going to do the assignment for the available resources. So uh, it will select a host for you depending on the availability or if you want to do direct assignments, you can select direct assignments as well and have a dedicated machine assigned against a dedicated user if you want to do it manually. Let's click next to create session hosts. In here, we are going to create and add virtual machines to our host pool. Select yes, give a name prefix. I'm only going to create a single Windows 11 virtual machine for this host pool but you can create up to 500 virtual machines. I'm going to call mine win11-avd and I'm going to select this as no. I do not want any infrastructure redundancy, so I'm going to select no. And I'm going to leave these settings as default. I'm going to select my image, Windows 11 Enterprise version 24H2. I'm going to leave the virtual machine size as it is, but if you want to change it, you can click change size and change the size according to your requirements. You can select the number of virtual machines in here that you would like to be created. As I mentioned earlier, I only need one, but you have the option to create multiple virtual machines up to 500 um, if you would like to create more virtual machines. Now, OS disk type I've got standard SSD here, but for production environments, it's recommended that you go with premium SSD. Since this is a test environment, I'm going to leave it as standard. I'm going to leave the default size as it is. Um, in a production environment, it is recommended that you enable boot diagnostics, but I do not need this in this case, so I'm going to disable it. I highly recommend that the virtual network that you use here is dedicated for the purpose of Azure Virtual Desktop. Now the subnet is the default subnet, so it's going to default to it. I'm going to leave the network security group type as basic, and I'm going to leave this public inbound ports to no, because I do not need any public inbound connectivity to my Azure virtual desktop virtual machines. Now, when it comes to um, domain join, you can use um, Active Directory as well if you run a hybrid on-prem um, environment. But if you can use Enter ID, use Enter ID because it will be much easier to manage and far less complicated than using an on-prem Active Directory credentials and, and joining it to an on-prem domain. But choose according to your requirements. I'm going to select Microsoft Enter ID. If you like, you can enroll the virtual machines with Intune as well. I do not want that to happen, so I'm going to leave this as no. In here, virtual machine administrator account. This is the local administrator account that you want created, so you can manage your virtual machine from an OS point of view at the OS level. So I'm going to call this um, AVD admin. I'm going to give it a password. Okay, now if you want to have a custom configuration script URL, you can insert that in here. I do not have any custom configuration requirements, so I'm going to go ahead and click next to go to workspace. We are at the workspace tab now. Before we talk about workspaces, we need to talk about application groups. So let me just take you to this official documentation from Microsoft. So that will help you to understand the terminology used in Azure Virtual Desktop. So let me scroll down. Now, what is an application group? An application group controls access to a full desktop or a logical grouping of applications that are available on a session host in a single host pool. Right? So this basically controls access to a virtual machine that's in the session host pool. So this is a logical grouping. And what you can do is you can assign an application group 
to a bunch of users or a single user for that matter and that user will have access to that session hosts in that host pool. Now when it comes to workspaces, workspace is a logical grouping of application groups. So an application group can be attached to a workspace. So there has to be a workspace at the top level and application groups gets attached to a workspace. Now, one application group can only be assigned to a single workspace. Read through this documentation for further clarification. I'll put this link in the YouTube description box below. So let's go back to our workspace tab. I'm going to register the desktop app group. This is the default application group to a workspace. I do not have any existing workspaces, so I'm going to create a workspace. So I'm going to call this AVD workspace and click OK, and I'm going to go Next. I do not need to enable this setting. If you'd like to get diagnostic streaming, you can do so. I'm going to click Next. I don't need any tags, and I'm going to click Next, and Review and Create. Now, this is going to go through a validation process, and once the validation is finalized, you will see a green colored tick in here which you can see right now, validation is passed. So we're going to go ahead and click Create. Once the resources have been deployed, we will continue with the rest of the tutorial. OK, the deployment is completed now. Let's go to the resource. The next stage is to assign the application group to a user group or a test user in this case. So this is the application group that got created during the previous setup. So I'm going to click on the default application group and expand it and go to assignments. You can assign this to a group of users who you would like to give access to the AVD setup. In this case, I'm just going to assign it to a single test user. Click add. I'm going to select my test user. And this will allow my test user to access AVD setup. The next step is important. It is going to provide the necessary RBAC roles to the users who are going to be using this AVD solution. So go to your host pool and confirm the virtual machines that you have in your host pool. As per this tutorial, we have this virtual machine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the virtual machine access control and provide the necessary RBAC role permissions to the test user so the test user can access this virtual machine. Now, this is the Microsoft documentation that we have followed during this tutorial that has all the information you need. I will put this in the YouTube description box below so you guys can get it from there. The role that we need to assign is virtual machine user login. If you want them to have higher privileges, you can assign virtual machine administrator login as well. So in this tutorial, I'm just going to assign this role. So let me just go back to my other window and I'm going to add a role assignment. I'm going to search for that specific role. Click next. And from here, I'm going to select my test user. Go next, review and assign. After we have configured user permissions and RBAC roles, the next thing to look at is the local computer's state. If you're using a local computer that is also connected to the same Azure AD or Entra ID tenant as your session host in AVD, you need to follow these instructions as per Microsoft documentation. So what you basically need to do is you need to copy this and then go to the virtual desktop host pool. Scroll down until you see RDP properties. And go to advanced tab and copy paste that value and click save. Now this is an optional step. You can follow this only if your local machine is also connected to the same Microsoft Entra ID or Azure AD tenant. This is the final step of the tutorial. We are now going to connect to the AVD host.
Now, in order to connect to the AVD host, what you need to do is open up Microsoft Store on your local computer, search for Remote Desktop, and download. Once it's downloaded, click Open. This will open up Remote Desktop application on your local computer. Click Add. Select Workspaces and enter the URL that you see on the screen. Select Subscribe. In here, put the user's Microsoft account and authenticate. We have successfully subscribed to our workspace. As you can see, here's the workspace name. So click on the session ID, select connect, and enter the password. Click connect.